And that's what everybody told you, you know, get a job, you know, go to college, yeah. get married, have kids. And I didn't have any of those things. And I didn't really love myself because I didn't have them. And now I know I'm like, no, the love I really, the love I was really supposed to get all along was the love I had for myself. Guys, how are you? Great, Wonderful. and you? So good. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. It of means course. a lot, truly. So you both are entrepreneurs, actress, boss lady. Both are mothers. What inspired your show, Side by Side? Oh wow! You take it. <laughs> yeah, take it. You can start. Well, I feel like um, starting as actresses, that was the only thing we knew our whole lives. And then as time has gone by, things have evolved so much, like mm -hmm. reality television. We only ended up on reality television because of our relationship with our family friends. And then people would ask us, like, do you guys want to do a show? And we're just like, no. Like, nothing ever seemed to speak to what we wanted to do because for the longest time, all we ever knew was you do a, t you do a series, you play a character. Yeah. Yes. It was never really about us being ourselves. So we realized people didn't really know who Malika and Khadija were. Mm -hmm. You know, they were like, yep. are they from Atlanta? We're like, no, we just did a movie called ATL. Was she, yeah. <laughs> are you guys from Louisiana? We're like, no, she just lived in Louisiana because her husband played for the Saints. Like, so we realized there were a lot of things out there about us where people just didn't know mm -hmm. yeah. who we were. And we wanted to have control over that narrative and the sure. way we exposed our lives and the yeah. things that were true to us. So side by side was- um, We're a, always side by side. Yeah, it was the passion mm -hmm. Kind of like project. given. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was our way of finally being able to share mm -hmm. with other people that were so inquisitive about who we were. Yeah. And for me, I told you guys, even before we kind of started rolling, I feel like I learned so much about you two from side by side. Yeah. And with that, there was a conversation that you guys were having, and it was specifically with you, Khadija, where you were honest and vulnerable enough to say that you didn't have a desire to get married. No. You didn't have a desire to have kids. You didn't yeah. have a desire, and now you have been married yeah. for over 11 years. And yeah, you almost have, 12 in yeah, July. Yeah. Three kids, and you yeah. have a zoo. Four. Full, full, yes. Four kids, yeah. yeah and a zoo, a zoo full, of, full of animals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how did you, can you take me to the moment where, because I think this is really important for people to understand that you had this fear and this preconceived notion of marriage, this preconceived notion of motherhood, mm -hmm. where essentially fear stopped you wanting to do that. But for some way, somehow, in a moment of your life, there was a moment where you divorced fear and yeah. you married your promise. You oh, married. I wouldn't even you just gave me chills. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I wouldn't have even said it that way. Divorce with fear That's and marry your you, promise. You divorce fear and marry your wow. promise. And it's so commendable because we are, we are in a culture and a generation where we believe mm -hmm. those thoughts that those we're yes. thinking. And, we, so and we believe all of those other things that, you know, the childhood trauma, those things. So what was that season like for you and how did you get there? My mother's voice is so loud mm -hmm. in everything I do. Mm -hmm. And I know Malika can Thank agree you. with that 100%. Um, she always said to me, because I'm her baby, although we're twins, I was the last drop in the bucket, as mm -hmm. she would say. So she would always say to me, like, no, you are going to get married. And mm -hmm. you are going to have children. And mm -hmm. I know that's going to happen for you. I've seen it. I've prayed about it. I've prayed about it for all my girls. And she was like, it's not when it's going to happen for you. It's going to be who it happens for you. Mm -hmm. And she was right. Yeah. Because this one wasn't happening any other way. <laughs> but then, no, if it's us, then it's us, and that's what we're doing. And it wasn't like in the shape of an ultimatum. Mm. It was the way someone presents themselves in your life where they go, no, I, I'm for your life. I love you. I'll take care of you. I think that that's what people are sometimes a little scared to show you. Sure. And... I'd never seen it not having the best of male role models in my life. I needed to see someone mm 
Mm-hmm. I saw men leave. Mm-hmm. I didn't see them stay. Mm-hmm. And so when this one was like, no, I'm staying because I love you and this is what I want for us. This is what I want for our whole family. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't know that was even a thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's good. What words could you lend to someone that is where you are, that had that fear of all of that because of the trauma? I think things happen in our lives and we're conditioned or we're protecting ourselves, which I think is important. But I also think you have to be open enough and you have to allow fear to take a back seat for a second long enough to see that there might be something on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And I was open enough to go, okay, I'm being fearful again. I'm Mm -hmm. letting the little girl in me that, you know, like I had to go, okay, so maybe you can believe what he's saying. Maybe you can watch the actions versus the words. Mm -hmm. And then you can allow your mental to protect your your emotional. So I think that's probably the best advice I would have to give. Yeah. Thank God for transitions in our life. It's like an either, it's an opportunity for us to either grow, you know, and like push against that opposition or it's either we'll marry back with fear. Yeah. You know, but I think with, even for me, because like we talked, I have a 15 month old, a toddler. And just there is that, there is that guilt that comes over. There is is that fear of the unknown that comes over. So, I mean, either one of you can answer this. How do you, in your motherhood, deal with the fear of the uncertainties of, is this the best school for them to go to? Is this the best caregiver for them? Is this the best church for them? Is this the best? How how, how do you guys navigate those waters? Because it's tough. Gosh, I've made, in my mind, the right decisions. And I've made the wrong decisions. I had a child repeat a grade. I've had a child go to four different schools in two years. I have had the adjustments Mm -hmm. of trying to make the right decision for them. But sometimes if we don't try it, it's like learning a food for the first time. Yeah. If you don't actually taste it, how do you know you don't like it? How do you know it's good for you or you're allergic to it? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so it is trial and error. Mm -hmm. And I think that... I've had to do so much of that to go, oh, now that I know that I, I'm, I'm okay with trying, I know that sometimes I'll fail. Yeah. Then I can be okay with failure long enough to get back up and go, I'm, I'm going to try to do the right thing this time. Now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. I think you just, you have to give yourself, like she said, a little bit of grace. Yeah. What do you guys lean on that is, during uncertainty? Each other. All the time. Family. We're extremely dependent. Mm-hmm. Prayer. Mm-hmm. Just about, you have so many thoughts that go through your head in one day. And to recognize that more than half of them are not true. More and than, more than that, half. Yeah, that more than you should half. let roll through and fly out. Yeah. Like yeah. most things we allow to stick with us because it might just seem to work, you know, in some area of your life. But it's not something you're supposed to marry to. It's not something you're supposed yeah. to characterize yourself off of, whether that's, yourself, another human being, a situation, like we have to learn how to let things go. So we communicate But that is so that hard. So it Tough. is. To let things Tough. go. But I tell you, when you don't let it go, you're holding it and yeah. something else is on its way. And you're making Ooh, it harder And that's on how yourself. we're like, well, babe, well, look, today's today. Today's yeah. the date and guess yeah. what? T- something's coming tomorrow. Yes. So if we're still hanging on to what happened today. Come on. We're going to have a much harder time getting through tomorrow. The one thing that's consistent in life is change. You're not always going to be happy with that change. It's what you do when you're faced with it that matters the most. Cry, kick, scream, because we do all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you got to move on because guess what? Another storm's coming. Take me to a challenge in your life where it came at you and you're like, I can't make it. I'm not going to make it out of this. But you did. (gasps) Um, Khadijah might know that answer. Yeah, she knows I mean, it. I've I've met her. I've met a She's few. A few. I've met a few, but you know, I think I feel so blessed to have ever had my son. But he is the greatest change that I ever knew. Now, I was the girl that made a wedding book. You couldn't tell me that my prince wasn't going to roll in on a big black shiny horse and we weren't going to, you couldn't have told me that. I am not married 
and didn't have my first baby until I was 37 years old. So nothing that I thought was going to happen actually happened for me. So I had to get knocked kind of off of a high horse, but I later on realized that I got what I needed when I was truly ready for it because I needed to grow up. Yeah, you I better did say not it. have what I wanted because mm-hmm. I was too childish. I wasn't ready for it. I was too, I, I I was so comfortable with being auntie and making mm-hmm. money and yeah. being there for my sisters and my friends and all of that. But there was a place where I needed to be That's a good. little less selfish to get all those things I said mm. I wanted. Yeah. Are you happy then that you got knocked off your horse? Oh, absolutely. I would do it all over again. Mm. Mm. bumps, bruises, Especially the ways I was hurt, mm. the, pe- the other people that I hurt, like... Because you know where it, t- it took where you. It t- oh, God, yeah. God, you, you yes. Know, yeah. And I think you, it, I had to get on this side and realize it wasn't everybody doing something to Malika. You play a major role in your own outcome. Switching gears a bit. Hopefully we are at the end of this pandemic. Oh, Who knows? I pray. I, I pray. Please, Lord, Father. <laughs> Tired. Um, I believe it was an opportunity for a lot of us. I mean, it was a big, just the overarching theme of the pandemic, I feel like represented transition for a lot of us. Yeah. Um, Transitioning into and transitioning out of things. What do you guys believe that you were transitioning out of in order order to transition into? What old did you transition out of and what new have you transitioned into? It's a really good question. It is. I know I'm transitioned out of having more children. <laughs> you found that answer? I have four now. I like, think we're good. good. Yes. That I came out of the pandemic yes. and no more kids. Yes. Yeah, I went yes. into it with three. I came out with four. Yeah. Um, I do have a feeling of completion in that though. So mm, I'm joking. Good. Yes. And I'm kidding. Totally. But I'm like, we're, we're, we're three on three now. We got three boys, three girls, including mom and dad. Yes. And I do feel like we're complete. And that's such a blessing. Yeah. And that's a good feeling. And the best part about it is that because dad still wanted one. Yeah. And was still eager to have one. And so feeling like he's finally in the complete yeah, place. Yeah, you're, you're good now. You're like, you're done. Yeah, 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 you're good. You're, you're sure. Good. Did I make you happy? Exactly. Great. You know? So yeah. it feels like that, but it also feels like, okay, you know what? I've done that. Now I get to raise them. Now I get mm-hmm. to make them proud. Now mm-hmm. I get to make my mistakes. Now I get mm-hmm. to learn from them. Now I get to... Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still, we say it all the time, we're growing up with our kid. Mm-hmm. So we all just get to grow up. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. born. Yeah. We just get to grow up. Yeah. I love and there's that. a lot of things that we mm-hmm. want to do as a family and our greater family. We're yeah. like a family of 15. I want her to have more. You know, I think there's a lot of things that we're going to come out of this yeah. going, you know what? We did this in the pandemic. I know. We both had children mm-hmm. over the course of the pandemic. Which is wild. So did I. Which was like, I it's like nobody the, planned on the, the pandemic. Most, yeah, wildest thing, you know. But then but. you had a baby and, you know, like yeah. things happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big growth happened during what this is, time. Okay, how about this? What's one proclivity, one weakness, one thing that you transitioned out of that mm-hmm. you are trying to transition into? For me, it was forgiveness. Mm. She did. I can mark that. I, I, I was never really that great at forgiving. Why do you think you weren't? My inability to want to deal with or confront discomforts, things that truly hurt me. I was kind of like, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I don't have to deal with it. And that's just how it's going to go. But that's genuinely not the way you treat other people. Yeah. And it's not just because you don't want to be treated that way, but that's also you slighting yourself in life. Yeah. I, for, I even forgive myself mm, for good. some of the decisions that I've made in not forgiving. And I think it's like a full circle. I'm just so much happier now with the kind of woman that I am because mm. I felt like I was sat down and I had a baby but gen- just the pandemic just sat me down and made me look at myself. Yeah. yeah. You know, like a lot of people were going stir crazy. And there were times where I was too. Yeah. But I think I, I kind of decided I was going to use the time to just like try to better my relationships yeah. with people or right some of my wrongs. The culture has the great job and the proclivity to say that in order for you to arrive or you made it is the world knowing your name fame, money in your account, the cars you drive, the circles you're in. What is that to you and do you believe that you have arrived? 
We don't do well with titles. Yeah, I was gonna say if that's how if that's the definition from the world, fine, I'll take it. But I like sleep at night. I like comfort when I sleep. I need to know that everybody is fed and fed well. One of the ways we say we speak to love is like, we'll feed you. If you come in our house, you're going to eat well, you're going to drink well, you're going to laugh, you're going to smile, you're going to have a good time. That's what matters to us. Come on. Yeah. I think irregardless of what you have, if you know who you are, you have a right. Because things are going to come and go. And they right. have. I'm going to go, so when been, I lose that, well, I don't have that car anymore. Am I, I, I'm not mean I anymore, didn't arrive. Right? I'm, no, I, I, I don't. Track. And it's like, fine I mean? if someone else defines himself in that way, because that fine. may work for them. But for us, you know, D, you know, we, we grew up in a business where we weren't always the most successful, didn't always have yeah. a job. That's real. Oh, we've, we, been we we've been broke, we've been rich, we've been broke, we've been rich. We have We know the dollar flop. menu. Oh, and we know the steakhouse. Yeah, come on. And sometimes it's not that we don't have it. Sometimes we're budgeting this time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes work is a little light. The priorities like, might be different. Yeah, yeah, so it's like the arrive thing is for me, it's the comforts, it's the, it's the standard that we are able to yeah. maintain. Yeah, exactly. And you said you have to know who you are mm -hmm. as opposed to having the things. How do you know who you are? I think I, I pretty much assessed what my priorities are. Mm -hmm. And I love God. I love others. I'm honest. I choose happiness. I try to treat people the way that I want to be treated. And I know that the things are for me are for me. I'm confident in the way I walk because of my faith. And I know that when I fall, I'll get back up. Whew. And I actually really, you better not I cry. really love Malika now. I didn't know it was coming. I called it. I get it. You I know, mean, it's like you could live your whole life thinking, you know, you know, when I was in my 20s, you couldn't have told me like that I didn't know who I was. I knew everything. That's when Same. we thought we are. That's right. I, I thought you, you didn't mean that. I'm emotional. No, I'm sorry. sorry. That's the, why priorities I asked you were, that. the priorities were different, and that's what everybody told you. You know, get a job, you know, go to college, yeah. get married, have kids, and I didn't have any of those things, and I didn't really love myself because I didn't have them. And I know I'm like, no, the love I really, the love I was really supposed to get all along was the love I had for myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And just accept that it doesn't all come the same way. It's not yeah. going to look the same as the next no, person's stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the just stuff like that we, matters, you that's know? That's true. It's like, mm -hmm. just like we all have different jobs for a living. We all have different work we have to do on ourselves. Oh, so beautiful. If you guys are writing a book, Malika and Khadija, The Life of, what chapter are we in right now? And what is the title of the chapter? Oh, good question. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for this question. Yeah. Actually, How'd you know? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I think if my life was a book, it'd be a little bit more like a basketball game. It's like one, two quarters, halftime, three, four. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are you? In half the game. Time. Yeah. You're at halftime? Half I'm at halftime. Really? Yeah. So is it safe to say like, why are you You've at only just begun? So I guess my book has like five chapters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I guess I'm in the third. Game. The third. Okay. I'm in the third What's, what, what is it? What does it entail? There's another kid in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have another baby. Awesome. I want a little girl so bad. But more than anything, I want Ace's sister. Because mm -hmm. I think he's going to be an incredible um, yeah. brother. But, you know, um, it's love for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, partnership is the thing that I— Outside of me, of course. For sure. You're <laughs> you have forever that, right? and ever a man. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I, I would like to see um, some of the things that I've dreamed of doing and could have done, mm -hmm. but just—I wouldn't do a lot of things for Malika. Yeah. I'd do everything for everybody else. That's good. But That's now I feel chapter. like I'm That's in my, chapter. you know, I'm, I'm kind of in my chapter where I was like, no, it's want, my yeah, time. I'm like, I want my partner. Yeah. I want my vacation home. I want to start my business. Mm. I have like a lot of things that I'm now starting to feel like I'm allowing myself to do. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. What, what about you? You know what? I'm in the chapter where 
I'm growing in spaces that I've kind of stepped out of, which is mm. probably my acting career. Mm. And and I I used to say it's a huge high is to get married and have kids. And now I'm like, no, no, I'm going to make you guys really proud. Now I'm going to go back to that. Mommy stopped and became this, and I played this role for you guys, but now I'm going to go play some roles for me. So I think that's where I am. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Lastly, here at Butter, of course, we love all the products yes. for mm-hmm. our skin and what we take care of, you know, all the stuff that we put on our external. How do you guys take care of your internal? It's like a checklist. Sleep is at the top of it for us. <laughs> Not that well, we know a lot of it. That's at the top I'm missing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's what we want. Yes. It's like the yeah. number one thing. I know most people are like, ah, oh, if you sleep too much, blah, 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 whatever. We don't get the sleep we would like. But boy, when we get it, do we love it. Yes. I think that's how we recharge our battery. Mm-hmm. And if it's not sleep, it's rest. I always tell her, if your Ugh. feet are not up, you're not resting. Love like that. literal. So even if you're that. sitting Literally. on the couch, no. you need to put your feet up on this. Let you're not. That. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to rest. Your feet have to be yep. like this. Um, um, mind, body, soul work. Mm-hmm. You know, D and I have got, we're like, you know what? I've got these babies. <laughs> well, we got to put them in a stroller and push them up the hill. Like, yeah. we're going to work out. Because we know Release that's a form. The that's a, yeah, it's a it's a, a part of um, physical therapy that is necessary for us. I'm not as great as a prayer warrior as Khadija is. That's first. I'm for working me. on it. Yeah. Um, and I guess yeah, I, uh, the the physical aspect is caring less about what I look like. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's good. I've given myself, and it's funny because people are like, your skin looks so good. I'm like, do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> do nothing. Yes. So I don't know. There's just some some new ways that I'm trying on that I want to like, you know, marry to them, should I say. I love your married woman. Yes. Oh, the divorce and then marriage. Div- divorce that, and things and marry that's some what things. Because that's what you did. Yeah. And that's what we do in life. It's like yeah. we have to literally separate in order to… Get more. And yeah. Isn't that yeah. the in- interesting part? Yeah. The one that never wanted to get married is divorcing and marrying everything. Yes, yes. It's interesting. <laughs> what do you do to keep your internal um, up? Like I said, for me, it's prayer first. Something I do with my kids every morning. I don't care if I'm packing lunches or driving them to drop off at school. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you. It's the first thing we do every day. That's my forefront. That's my. I could falter thereafter if that's what the day's going to bring. Mm-hmm. But that's where I'm going to start. Um, that in my praise and worship. Uh, and then after that, it's, it, it's really just feeding like what I need for myself, which I had spent so much time not doing. The prayer, of course, is for me, but it's stuff like she said, like the physical stuff, like yeah. go for a walk, yeah. listen to an audio book, read something, like something where I feel like I'm feeding myself. I'm really into words I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like big words and definitions, sometimes I use them wrong way. She's but like, because, oh, that's a good word. <laughs> but I'm losing, like, trying. I love words. Sure. That's something I never knew. Like, it excites me. So I still like to learn. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't like it so much when I was younger. So I, if, I feel really good if I'm still learning. What would you tell someone that wants to have the prayer life that you have? It's just a conversation. Come on. It starts there. It can be more than a conversation. You be scooting and jumping and skirting and and kicking up and down a church aisle if that's who you become as a worshiper. But for me, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's cries and tears and praises and what, you know, if that's where it takes me. But we talk to people all day long. We just say thank you for our Starbucks. It's a conversation. Sometimes just start by saying thank you. Mm. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you what your favorite butter product was. Oh, that's easy. The Vibe Brush. (gasps) Oh, What do we say? It takes it uh, off. It, just, it takes it off. Takes it yeah, off. It take takes it off. it off. Take it off. It, feel, it feels like you're giving yourself a facial. Yes. How many people can say, oh, today I gave myself a facial? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so much better if somebody else does it. The Vibe Brush will do it. Yes. Maliko, what is your favorite butter product? It is the Tea Tree Oil Scrub. Yes. Why? It, uh, there, a, it smells amazing. And there's no way of walking away after using it, not knowing that your skin is softer. And, and it smells amazing. Yes. And just getting all that no, it's like, gush and stuff off. I feel like everything we're talking about, it's relative. Scrub it off. Yeah, that layer's gone. Scrub it off That's and a word. keep going. That's it. Mine, honestly, I don't really technically have, but it's the vitamin C. 
Mm. And then the charcoal okay. mask. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say that. That mask. I didn't want to interrupt you. I was going to say the mask. My husband loves a charcoal mask. Yep. Same. I'm supposed to ask for more. For the record. By the way, yes. I am. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for sitting down and speaking Aww, with me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. You guys were so good. You are thank you so much. the best thank to you. talk to. Aww. I'm taking I was like, thank I'm, you. you might have to invoice running. me. Oh, because we're going to like run therapy. with your motto. Uh, no, that was, yes. and I appreciate that. But I love, you guys gave so much wisdom and gold, like truly. And thank you. Definitely you. Brought me to, to my tears a little bit. With, I do that. Oh, That's girl so talk. Great. That's yes. easy. We'll so do it over good. wine next time. Yes, <laughs> please. so easy to suffer in silence, right? Especially when you're a strong person and you got it all together, people are used to seeing you that way. And so removing that wall to be vulnerable in a space where now everyone is expected you to rise to this wonderful occasion and you're gonna kill it, you're gonna be the best. And there's days that you just like, don't feel the best. 